Hello everyone. Today we are going to make a shadow smoke effect attached to the character or static mesh. We can see that these two meshes with smoke are very good in the level. Okay, let's do it. First, we will use some assets. These are the free character from Maximo and the textures provided by Epic. They are all used in previous videos. We can download them for free on my Patreon. Now let's take a look at the materials used to make Niagara. Most of these materials have been made in previous videos. So here is a quick preview. First, Material Aura. Just like the material we made in the video for Aura. Using time and dynamic material parameter controls the speed of the texture and adds distort and animation to the texture. Then do some math and mask to get the shape we want. The next step is to set the emissive color, opacity and refraction of the material. These are all set based on the shape, it's very simple. If we feel that the preview material speed is too fast, it doesn't matter because I will put these materials in the asset folder and we can download them for free. We have made these materials many times. The difference between each material is only slightly different, such as different panner, tiling, textures and masks. Through these, we can make a new material, but in fact, their steps are almost the same. Okay, next let's take a look at the material paper. This material is exactly the same material used in a video where we made firecrackers. Then there is the material shadow swirls, which uses a flipbook texture. We use the alpha channel to simulate the animation effect of smoke diffusion. Okay, next is material smoke. As we can see, only a smoke texture is needed, which is very simple. That's all materials we need. Now let's take a look at Niagara. This time we use five emitters, it would take a lot of time to make them one by one, and these emitters are very basic, so we won't make them from empty anymore, let's just look at the finished effect. First, Emitter Aura. This is its sprite renderer. Set life cycle to self, and change the mode to once. Use user parameter to control the duration of the particles, so that we can simulate states like buffs, then set the spawn rate to 15, in the initialized particle, Set the life cycle to 0.15 to 0.3. Use user parameters to control the color. Set the sprite size to 40 to 60. Add random rotation. Okay, first we use the sampling skeletal mesh location to attach these particles to the mesh. We can set the preview mesh. If we don't need it, use clear. It should be noted that we need to set mesh sampling type to triangle. If we sample bones or sockets, the particle spawn fixed location then add velocity from point. Add scale sprite size in the particle update, 0 to 1. Update the particle rotation and scale color from 0 to 1 and then to 0. The alpha is the same, of course. There is also drag and acceleration force. These force modules will make the movement of particles look more random. Finally, Add dynamic material parameters, set UV offset and texture speed. Okay, next let's take a look at emitter swirls. In this emitter, the particle rendering material we use is shadow swirls. The other module parameter settings are almost the same. Spawn rate is 100. The life cycle in the initialized particle is 0.3 to 0.6. These are the same. Scale sprite size is from 1 to 3, because the particles simulate the effect of smoke, and smoke should slowly spread from small to large. Here we set a different scale curve. RGB is 20, Alpha is 2. The force module settings are the same, then add sub UV animation. Because we use flipbook texture in the material, we need sub UV animation to animate the texture. Here we set the end frame to 35, which means that we only use the part of the texture in front of it. Because the texture behind the flipbook is very obviously diffused, we don't need it, so only use the front part.
Okay, next is Emitter Spark. Here we use a default sprit material. The same life cycle. Spawn rate is based on the emitter's loop duration gradually decreases, so that when the effect ends, the number of particles spawned will decrease, which looks more realistic. In the initialized particles, set the life cycle to 0.3 to 1.5, the same particle color and random sprite size, minute is 0.5 to 1.5, max is 1 to 2. Here we don't need to set the rotation of the particles, because in the sprite renderer, particle is a line velocity, then sample skeletal location, add velocity from point, add initial mesh orientation, because we use aerodynamic drag, as we said before. Okay, then set the scale color, their scale curve is 5, and different acceleration forces are added, its x-axis and y-axis are negative 10 to 10, and the z-axis is 500 to 800, it is multiplied by a gradually increasing curve to make the force vary according to the lifetime of the particle. The same is true in curl noise force, random force, and curve. Frequency is 25. These are basic settings. Next is vortex force, using a random value from 100 to 5000, then set random axis, Finally is aerodynamic drag and aligned sprite to mesh orientation, just keep the default values. Of course the scale sprite size by speed, minute is 0.5 to 1, and the max is 1 to 2, ok, this is spark, next is emitter dust, all of its parameters are the same as emitter spark, the only difference is that it uses material paper, so the spawn particles will be larger and darker. Okay, and finally there are two emitter smoke, here we use smoke to make the glow effect, use material smoke. Sub UV is 8. Same life cycle, set the spawn rate to 25. Set the lifetime in the initial particle to 0.5 to 0.7, random particle size and random rotation. Sample skeletal location, add velocity, scale sprite size. Same rate, same scale color. Scale curve is 1 and 0.5, then add drag, acceleration force, and sub UV animation. We need a complete animation here. So its start and end frames are 0 and 63. The same settings are also in the emitter big smoke. The only difference is that its particle size is larger, 75 to 95, and we set a larger value in scale sprite size for 2. The other parameters are the same. Okay, so this is a complete Niagara, we can put it in the level and take a look at it. Then attach it to the character and we will get a nice shadow smoke effect. We can modify its color and loop duration, such as 1 second, so that it will end after 1 second of spawn, if it lasts longer, it can be used as a buff effect, if we want it to be attached to a static mesh, we can replace the skeletal mesh location with a static mesh location, or directly use a shape location to manually set a shape. Such as cylinder, like this, we set its height to use a parameter control. Attach it to this skeletal mesh sword. Fix rotation. Set the life duration to 15. This has an effect of enchanting the weapon, it looks very good. Okay, so that's all for this video, I hope you like it, bye.